okay, like uh, maybe say, like why we need God to die for humans? Okay, now that's to a different get the salvation. Question. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to get you to understand. So that's a different question. So now you you're forgetting okay. the time factor, right? You don't care about the time. Okay, okay, let's leave that. Yeah. When you say, why does God need? Uh, well, God doesn't need anything. He doesn't need to forgive you. He doesn't need to save you. He can just give you what you deserve. That's the first thing. So you keep saying, like when you said God need, God doesn't need anything. He doesn't need to do anything. He didn't need to create you. He didn't need to create me. He doesn't need to save me. He can give me what I deserve. So that's the first thing. So we have to get that straight. So you understand God doesn't need to forgive you, right? God doesn't need to forgive us. Yeah. Does he have to forgive you or he can just give you what, what you deserve? Um, Like, I'm not demanding God to forgive right, me. I didn't, ask you, I didn't say you're demanding. I said God doesn't need to, right? Does he have to forgive you? Mm. It's a really hard question, though. I, I cannot. Well, I don't know how to Why would God that. have to forgive you? Does he need you to exist for him to be God? So he doesn't have to forgive you because he doesn't need no, you. No, no, no. Like he, like he, he always exists. I know that. He doesn't. That's my point. So uh, he doesn't have to forgive you, right? Okay. Yeah. If he has Somewhere. to do something, that means he's obligated and he's bound to you. But God is bound to no one. He's obligated to no one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, that, so let's establish first God doesn't need to forgive anyone, right? Okay. I just want to make sure you understand because I'm helping you understand. Uh, uh, what, okay, okay, what, I get it. I get it. Okay, so that part we got. Okay, now that we established he doesn't need to, he chooses to. Now, the question okay. is, here's the question. When God chooses to do something or God chooses to say something, <clears throat> then things become different. In other words, he doesn't, mm -hmm. he didn't have to choose to create. He didn't have to choose to punish sin. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, he, he didn't have to do any. He chose to do that. Now, now that he's chosen to create, now that he's chosen to <clears throat> enjoin upon mankind rules, regulations to live by in order for them to enjoy God and benefit from his creation. Now things are different. So now he created Adam and Eve. And he says to Adam and Eve, <clears throat> One thing I do not want you to do, do not eat of the, the forbidden fruit, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat, that sin, because sin is disobedience to God's command. See, people like to use the word sin. Sin simply means breaking the law God has enjoined upon mankind. So he, was, he gave them one law, one command. Don't eat the forbidden fruit. Now, he gave him other commands such as be fruitful, meaning, you know, multiply, reproduce. Now, if they didn't do that, that too would be sin. Because what is sin? I'm trying to help you understand the, the Bible theology a little deeper. So you go a little deeper, not too deep where I confuse you. If they didn't choose to obey God and being fruitful, that too would have been sin, right? Because what is yep. sin? Not obeying God's command. No, right? yes. Okay. So he gave them, actually, if you look at it, he gave them the command of be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and I was reproduce, have children. If they said no, that would have been sin. They would have been punished. Then he yep. said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They did. That's sin because sin means to break his law, his commands. But then he yep. told them, here's the thing. If you sin, disobey, you will die. So now here's the thing. The Bible tells us, for example, Numbers 23 and 19. Now Adam, can, has, he has to bring up the Bible verses because I can't do it. Yes, sir. Numbers 23 and 19. The Bible tells us God is not a man that he should change his mind, nor a son of man that he should lie. Shall he say and not do? In other words, if God says something, he's going to do it, right? Yeah, if you okay. say something, you're going to do it. Yeah, he doesn't go back on his word. He doesn't. He says, look, you do this, this will happen. You do that, that will happen. So when he told them, you eat, you die. Okay, but they ate. Now here's the dilemma. If Adam and Eve had died that moment, 
that means either that would be the end of humanity or God would have to then create another pair of human beings because they had no children. If he had demanded they die that moment, it would be the end of human existence. So either he'd have to now create another pair and start over again or he would show mercy and forgive them and extend their life and not take their life away until they have children so that the earth would be filled with human beings. But wow. by forgiving them, he goes back on his word because he said, okay. no, he, didn't. he said, you're going to eat, you die, right? Yep. You're going to eat, you're going to die. But yep. God said, hold on, I don't want them to die. I want mm -hmm. to extend them mercy and compassion because God's desire is not that human beings die. And I want them to reproduce so that the earth will be replenished, filled with humans. So then he didn't bring about the judgment of death. He forgave them. But now we have a problem. God mm -hmm. now violates his word, goes against his word, goes against his justice. Because justice is you get what you deserve. You do this, this is what you get. Well, they sin. What does justice demand? They die. Well, he didn't give them justice. He showed them mercy. So we have two problems now. This shows God is more merciful than just. And that God went back on his word and did change his mind. So how do we solve the dilemma, the tension? How can God still be just and God be a God of integrity who keeps his word but at the same time be a merciful, compassionate, loving God by not giving Adam and Eve what they deserve, which is death, which then would end human existence. And then he'd either forget about creating humans or he'd have to create another pair. How can he be all of that without being more loving and compassionate than just and holy or more just and holy than loving and compassionate? Because now we have a dilemma, don't we? Yeah. You you see the dilemma, right? Yep. Well, now let me show you how God shows you he solves the dilemma. Let me show it to you. Watch how God's going to solve the dilemma. Go to Genesis 3:21. Oh, Genesis 3:21. he's going to read it. Yes. So I'm doing it. it. Yeah, he's going to read it. Okay. Notice how he solves the dilemma. Walk with me. We're going to go through this step by step as the Holy Spirit helps me to help you for the glory of Jesus. So when I ask questions, it's to help you think deeper, more deeply, right? Okay. So notice what God did for them. Any translation that will make sense for him. If it's old, also, if the King, if it, old English is hard, then read something else. Yeah, I'm going to read New King James. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tinkers of skin and clothed them. Tunics meaning clothing, right? Clothing. That's what it is. To a tunic is like a robe, clothing, right? Perfect. Okay, but now uh, skin. That means this robe was made out of skin. What skin? They're they're the only human beings alive. And at this point, God doesn't create anything new, because in Genesis one thirty one, after He finished the creation of the female. God stopped from his work of creation because everything that needed to exist was brought into being and he saw it's very good and he entered his seventh day of rest. Rest meaning he wasn't going to add to creation. Now he's just going to supervise creation, sustain creation, and preserve creation. So where do you get these uh, tunics of skin? Uh. Skin. So it's from skin. Not human skin. Adam and Eve didn't die. They're the only human beings. Can you say it again? Like, I didn't get the quote. What, how do you make uh, clothing from skin? Skin of what? Two leaves of skin. You can't be human, right? Because they're the first humans. He didn't kill them and take their skin and make clothing. Yeah. It like, what's the meaning of tunics? Uh, it, it's, uh... Well, that's why if this brother didn't read New King James or New American Standard, and if you listen, I said it means a robe, garment. You went two up. Go down, brother. You passed it up. Stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah. Sorry, sir. Which one oh, do you want me to read? Animal okay. skins. Okay, okay. I get it. I get it. Now, New, Mar New American Standard Bible says garments. Okay. Yeah, New American Standard. Yeah. Yep. Garments of skin. Yeah. Tunic. Uh, it's it's a like tunic. a robe. It's a garment. Okay. So this, these garments were made out of skin. 
What okay. skin from where? From animals, it says. Oh, uh, oh, well, that's that free. That's a paraphrase. A paraphrase means it tries to give you an explanation in the meaning. What you read right there, New American Standard, is the literal meaning. Okay. There is no word animal in the Hebrew. All right. So where would you get the skin Even from? In my, in my translation, I was reading in my translation, uh, my own language, it says animals too. Yeah, because they're helping you understand where the skin came from, but the word animal is not in the text. So it okay. gave it away for you. So he made the garments from the skin of animals? We don't know that. Yeah, but it's got to be animals because there's no other type of skin he could make the garments from, right? He can't make them from humans. Yep. So the only skin left would be that of animals, the beast that he created, right? Yes, yes. So the only thing we don't know is which animal he used. That we don't know. Okay, but you understand, yep. for him to make a garment from animal skin, that means he had to cause an animal to die. He had to kill an animal, right? Yeah. That's the principle. God says you must die when you sin. But mm -hmm. now, because I want to show you mercy and extend your life, mm -hmm. I'm going to have an animal die in your place. So he dies mm -hmm. the death you deserve, so you can be spared, and I can mm -hmm. show you mercy. So here oh. from the beginning, God is showing you that when I say the soul that sins must die, you have to die. Mm -hmm. So either you will die, or you can choose mm -hmm. to accept my substitution, a substitute mm. who dies in your place so you can be spared. So now you that see it's great. pointing to Jesus, isn't it? Yeah, it makes sense. I can okay, understand. Now, but now it's going to get a little deeper. Okay. Animals do not have the value and the worth of human, right? In the eyes yeah, of God. Yeah, they don't have. Okay, so... So an animal cannot suffice to pay the debt of disobedience. Sin, breaking right. the law, brings death. This is why if you find in the Old Testament, God is having them repeatedly sacrifice animals in their place mm -hmm. because one animal cannot t pay the debt for all human sins that will be committed from this moment on. No, no one animal because... An animal doesn't even have the same value of one human life, let alone millions of human lives, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we have the other dilemma, though. We don't have any sinless human beings who could then die right. voluntarily in the place of another human. And even if we did, a human life is equal to a human life. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, life for a life, right? Yeah. So even if you say you are sinless and you die... Your value, your the value of your human life is only equal to another human life. It it's it doesn't have the value that can equal all human lives because you're not better than anyone else. You're just as good and, and equal, right? Okay, yeah. So, like it's just like a one and one, like it really yeah, like that. Eye you, for like, an eye, like the law. The law says, you know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, life for life. In other words, if you if you murder someone right? Then they take your life. They don't take your life and your children's life, right? Yeah, yeah. Because soul is equal to soul. Life is equal to life, right? Yes, yes. So even hypothetically, if there was a sinless human being, all he can do is pay the debt of another human life because his human life doesn't <clears throat> equate to all human lives because he's not better He's just, he's on the same level as other humans, so it's life for life, right? Yeah. So now, who then is able to pay the debt of all human sins to cover the debt of all sins that have been committed and will be committed so that now when a human wants to be forgiven and not be given justice, what he deserves or she deserves, the payment has been made. All they have to do is off accept the payment, and all their debt will be canceled. Who alone is able to pay the debt of all human sin? Animals cannot do that, and uh, humans cannot do that. So only God can do that. Ah, but now hold on. It's a human sin, which means it requires a human death. 
how can God then pay the debt of human sin by dying the death of a human being when he's spirit? Why not angels? Brother, who told you angels are better than humans? Uh, I was thinking it does. No, that's not biblical. It's not even even the Quran. It's not Quranic. But forget the Quran for now. Don't you, believe, uh, don't you believe from your former Muslimic days that humans are higher than angels, or at least the righteous are, and or at least Muhammad? Yeah. Okay. But, uh, so how can an angel? How can an angel mm -hmm. carry the debt of all human sin and pay the debt of all human sin, even if he's better than a human? Uh, how many human lives is he better? I mean, in other words, if we take Michael, the angel Michael, let's assume he's better. Okay, how much better? So better that he, his, his one life is better than all human lives combined? Okay, it makes sense right now. Okay, if an angel die in the human place, the angel would be a god. Exactly. So he can't do it, can he? Yeah. I can understand. So only God has infinite value and worth so that only God can pay the debt for all human sins and still not be depleted in funds, just to use a human analogy, right? Because he's infinitely rich, right? Yeah. But the problem is it's a human sin, which requires a human death. But God is spirit, so how can he pay the human debt? So that means he had to become a human you answered it for yourself and welcome to jesus christ